What's up? In today's video, we're gonna see how Gary Kasparov suggests that you beat amateur players. Here's the game that Gary Kasparov played white in the simul against Oxford United football team. And again, while the football team is not the greatest match for Gary Kasparov, here he shows us how he thinks you should play against chess amateur players, because the way you play against amateur players is obviously different compared to the way you play against you know Anatoly Karpov or other guys like that that Kasparov faced normally. So here Kasparov plays bishop c4, the opening that I've been preaching for a long time and probably Kasparov just saw a couple of my videos. So bishop c4, what's the point? Um, well, first of all, you drag your opponent out of his or her opening knowledge because it's very likely that your opponent is already on his own. Also, it contains a lot of interesting attacking options down the line. Let's explore them together. Black plays knight f6, here white plays knight, uh, no, no, not knight c3, but pawn d3, which is also a nice little nuance. Uh, white needs to defend this pawn, right? And you can either play d3 or knight to c3, but knight c3 allows these little nasty tactics, knight takes c4, pawn d5, which complicates matters, and so we do not want that. Therefore, after black goes knight f6, hits this pawn, you just defend it by your pawn, and now it's rock solid. Black plays bishop c5, knight c3, another important little nuance. White delays development of their kingside knight. Notice that white doesn't play that. Why? Well, because we want to leave the option to push the pawn forward and attack. And after knight c6, that's exactly what Kasparov did, pawn f4. Seems slightly risky to open up this diagonal controlled by black, but in fact black can't do much there anyway, and by playing f4 you start expanding on the king side, putting pressure here, or maybe uh, wanting to gain space advantage on the king side with the move pawn to f5, and that's something already that black has to parry, and it's not that clear exactly how black should do that. Black played a natural move pawn d6, now Kasparov develops the knight, knight f3, now when the pawn is already there, now it's time to develop the knight, Black played a natural move, bishop to g4, just developing, and Kasparov played pawn h3, kicking this bishop off. And I do recommend that you play h3 when your pawn plays bishop g4. In vast majority of the situations, that's the right reaction, forcing black to make a decision about their bishop. And it's not as easy for black to decide what to do with the bishop here. The usual response is just to drop it back here, bishop h5, but in the current situation, that just loses after g4, Bishop g6, and thanks to this pawn f4, we are just capturing the bishop, it has nowhere to go, and we just win. Another option worth considering for black would be to take here on f3, and while normally getting the two bishops advantage as advantageous for white, but black can follow up with the move knight d4, which seems a bit annoying for white, hitting this queen, hitting this pawn, and uh, looks like white's gonna go down to d1 here back. That would be a bit sad scenario. Instead, there is a much stronger option, which is a move queen to g3. You let black capture this pawn and fork in your king and rook, because you're gonna capture here on g7 and develop a really strong attack on the king side. And it turns out that your attack overpowers black's attack. I've got another video about this where Bob the Fisher showed how you win here as white in this position, so let's come back to our stuff. In the game, black realized that all the standard options don't seem very lucrative for black, and so black just dropped the bishop back to d7. And after that, Kasparov locked his space advantage on the king side with the move pawn f5. And now, thanks to this little pawn, white actually achieves a lot, and black's position already is kind of dangerous here, because Thanks to this pawn, I mean, the bishop is locked, it can't get, get out anymore. White is having significant space advantage on the king side, and we can go bishop g5 at some point, or maybe even push the pawn there forward at some point if black castles. And uh, so we've got a clear plan of attacking on the king side, and for black it's much harder to figure out what to do. But first black played pawn h6, probably he was worried about white bringing the bishop there, so black played pawn h6. And Kasparov right away played the move pawn g4. Well, that was maybe a little bit too optimistic because white is pushing the pawn, you know, without trying to develop first. But anyway, since the position is closed, white may afford to even play a move like that. And what's the plan? Well, now you have this completely beautiful pawn chain. No, nobody can, you know, deny that <laughs> your pawn chain is strong. And at some point, white is ready to push forward with the move g5, especially if black decides to castle short, then g5 can be really strong opening up the position there. Therefore, black just played queen a7, kind of developing move, but also an awaiting move. Black thinks whether to castle a king side or queen side. And Kasparov played knight a4. 
black's only active piece is this bishop on c5, and it also prevents white from castling, therefore Kasparov decided to just trade it off. Black tried to escape, but white keeps pushing it, c3, pawn b4, finally the bishop was brought back, and now white can ca capture it happily. Black recaptures, and Kasparov played bishop e3 just to develop. Now there is no black's bishop on this diagonal, so white puts his own one there. And here black is kind of in trouble, because if you think about this from black's perspective, what is black going to do? You know, castling kingside seems dangerous, white already expanded there on the kingside. Castling queenside mm, could be safer, but still white can push a4, a5, you know, real quick and attack there just as well, so that doesn't seem super safe either. Uh, black just played the move rook a3, trying to counterattack here and maybe a little bit somehow distract white from his main plan. Kasparov played queen c1, defending the pawn and kicking this rook away. After rook a8, Kasparov played another move pawn a3 just to, you know, cover the square so that the rook can't go there anymore. And it's also kind of a waiting move. And black decided that, hey, it's finally time to make the decision, so he decided to bite the bullet and to castle despite of the danger. Because anyway, black needs to do something after all. But Kasparov was happy to break through on the king side with the move pawn g4, this co most common plan of white in this position. After pawn takes, bishop takes g5, now black is really in trouble. This pin is annoying, there's not much black can do about this. Uh, black tried g6, but Kasparov just played rook g1, putting the rook opposite to the king and preparing some nasty attack there. Black played rook d8, not exactly sure why, maybe he wanted to you know, escape there with the king, but that failed to nice little tactics. Bishop takes f6, queen takes followed by rook takes g6. White is taking advantage of that bishop that white put there prudently right on the second move of the game, and it pins the pawn. So the pawn can't move, and for that reason it's time for black to resign, so black can only give up the queen, but after that, with an extra queen and continuous attack, white would obviously win very easily. And here is our puzzle of the day. That occurred in another Kasparov's game from another simul. Kasparov once again played the bishop's opening, it's a similar setup, just the only difference is that in this case black put his bishop on e7 instead of c5 and so Kasparov could castle. In this position was black to play, black played knight at e4, Kasparov traded here, pawns on e5, and here we're reaching out to the critical position, black is trying to attack here, put in pressure. How would you play here as white? Please think about this, and if you can find a good move for white, please write it down in the comments below. Now, my video about the Bobby Fischer's game in the bishop's opening is over there, you may check this out, he showed how to develop that crushing attack on the king side, and also if you want to elevate your chess level overall, then you may attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there, and it has all that you need to become up to the master level player. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.